Hey everybody, it's Tim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so this is going to be part two of a video that I introduced a little while ago where I had a uh, Mandalorian helmet printed by April Storm Props and it was done with a variety of different um, kind of additive um, processes where 3D printing was done for each of the pieces using different methodologies um, that she sanded and primed most of them. A couple of them came back uh, kind of naked without any priming done on it um, or at least minimal priming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to finish up some of the parts. Um, there's not really a lot to do. Um, if you get something done by her site on Etsy, she does a lot of the work. And it came out really good. There's just a couple things that I want to touch up before I go to glue everything together and paint it the way I want it. So um, I'm probably going to end up doing this in stages as I don't have a lot of time to just kind of crank all the one shot and doing this after work after my son goes to bed. So uh, what I'm going to look at tonight are basically the uh, rangefinder pieces, which I believe she ended up making these probably with material jetting of some kind. Um, I know it looks similar to the Stratus's object that we have at work. Um, I, I don't know how well this will translate into the camera, but it ends up being really, really smooth, really fine, um, minimal line showing. Um, I'm going to just kind of hit it with an extra fine sanding block that I have just to get rid of some of the... You know texture that I can feel but by the time I end up uh, priming it and painting it I'm probably gonna put at least two coats of paint on I think it's gonna look great you're not gonna notice um, the other was the stock for the rangefinder which I don't know how well you can see on here but you got a lot of lines showing from the layers um, I believe this was done with fused deposition or fused filament uh, fabrication FDM FFF um, different people call it different things uh, but basically I ended up with some kind of tr channel tracks in here which i'm actually not worried about um because this is going to be inside um sandwiched between basically the earpiece and the nut on the outside um and this will be glued this section right in here will be glued inside the rangefinder housing later so i actually really don't care about these i'm not going to do more because this is going to add extra thickness to it and i just want like a nice glue joint but what I'm going to do is along the stock section, I'm just going to sand it a little bit and I might add a thin skim of Bondo to it, um, allow it to cure and then sand it in again. And then I'll probably mask these off with tape and then I'll just hit the whole thing with some primer. Um, I haven't settled on color yet. I think I'm going to try to do some nice contrasting. So I really wanted the helmet to be black and red. So I think what I'm going to do is the whole rangefinder end piece at least like the shroud for the housing and the little eye piece that you see here i think this is all going to be flat black to go along with the rest of the helmet and then what i might do is you know maybe i paint this white in here and make that outline red or something just to make it pop and stand out a little bit um, and then i think for contrasting i'm either going to paint this um some kind of silver you know like it almost looks good with a primed color, but you know, I want to get rid of the lines or maybe I'll do it in red. So then it kind of goes with the rest of the helmet, the theme of it. And, um, we'll look good with a little contrast mixed in. I thought of just doing the whole thing black, but I thought it'd be kind of boring if it was just all the same color. So, um, yeah, let's jump in. We'll start, uh, sanding some of the pieces. Now, um, I'm barely going to take any material off, so I'm probably not even going to bother masking up. Uh, but if you're going to do a lot of sanding of plastic like this, especially if you're hitting where it's been primed, things like that, um, always have some kind of face protection or have, um, you know, a ventilated area. Um, it's wintertime right now, so, you know, obviously it's hard to do stuff outside because you're going to get cold. Um, you're going to get your parts damp, um, you know, once dew comes down and everything. But uh, just make sure you're staying safe while you do this. So, all right, let's switch gears and uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, these are the two that I'm really concerned with. That one, you know, I can really take care of it pretty easily. The only one that really kind of bothered me was here. And it looks like there was just some sort of layer bind up or something kind of bubbled in that last like layer of print. You know, you can tell from the way they did it. Um, I think this is how they started the bed. It's really nice and smooth and it feels almost like it has that texture from uh, whereas this is super smooth. Um, but I'm not really sure. Um, each printer works a little bit different. This has a hair of a lip down below. So yeah, I believe this is the base. Um, yeah, so maybe something happened right at the start and somehow it actually strained itself out the whole way. But, you know, we'll never know. But either way, this one 
hit it with a little bit. I probably don't even have to bond to it. I could probably just spray paint and nobody would notice, but I'm going to do the little extra effort. And um, yeah, actually, I think this is the base. I think that's wrinkling from the, the tape that was put down. Um, so I'm surprised it came out that good. It looks nice. Um, that's what's weird about 3D printing is uh, as you work, some things work, some things don't. And you got to experiment a little bit. Uh, this is the one that's a big concern for me, but the solution is actually pretty easy. So the way this goes together is it goes in the end here. Well, you can see what happened is that towed out just a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you know, if I didn't really care, I could probably just squeeze it together and get it to go in. But that's going to have built up stresses inside and I don't want it to crack later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and just kind of hit the inner edge of this a little bit, hit the outer edge of this just a little bit, and then see if I can get it to go together pretty easily. Um, because I don't really want any stresses to be living inside that assembly over time. I want it just to sit nice together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, you know, super glue it together, uh, glue this section in. And then I'll prime it again and paint it the colors that I want. Um, you can see uh, she included, um, you'd have to run it down the middle or run it along in a channel and then close it up. But there's a little access hole in there. So if you want to put a lighting element in there, um, April actually included a translucent piece that could go over here. And you could put either like a tiny little LCD screen in there or you could just illuminate it. You know, whatever you want to do, uh, you have options. I'm not going to go that fancy on this build. Uh, this is just kind of like one that I want to do for fun and I'm not trying to make it, you know, super movie realistic to any degree. Um, I'm just going to have a good time with it. So let's uh, dive in. We'll start uh, kind of making it fit nice uh, assembled. Now the great thing is you can see this isn't sharp at all. I mean, the corners are kind of sharp, but they're not sharp to the point where I'm worried about like anybody hurting themselves. I'm going to leave that as is. And this all looks nice, you know, it's not perfect, but I'm not looking for perfect. It's Mandalorian armor. It's not supposed to be like a, you know, museum piece that had never seen battle. I mean, this, most of the time, people that want to make these look like accurate, like Boba Fett or something, they end up roughing them up and then kind of putting like artificial damage on there because they want to make it look scratched up. So yeah, I'm not going to worry about any of this. I'm just going to lightly hit this, get rid of some of the lines, and then we'll see how it comes out. So... Let's dive in. So we'll start with, um, actually we'll start with the ultra fine for this because I don't think it really needs that much. And remember the key with this is to go light. You don't want to sand too much because you can't put it back on um, unless you're going to 3D print it yourself and that's where the additive part comes in. Um, but as I want to just use the part that April and her team made, um, I don't want to damage this. I want to make this look nice and good. And that's feeling nice and smooth already. So obviously what I'll do is I'll clean this uh, prior to gluing and priming. You know, I don't want any of the dust to be kind of left behind. All I want is just a nice smooth finish and make it so that by the time I prime it, put probably two layers of paint on, any imperfections in there will be mostly hidden and nobody will ever really know. I just don't want to go too crazy and then make it so that it doesn't have any, you know, of the nice definable features because this is a great CAD model. It's a great printed part. Everything looks nice. It's easy to go overboard. That's why you can see I have my Dremel over here just in case. I have an orbital sander if I really had to, but that's not what I want to use for a project like this. Um, there's one small area on the inside of the helmet where there's a lot of buildup um, from the uh, filament layers. I might go in and hit that real quick with the Dremel, but I'm certainly not doing it for any of these outside areas um, that just need fine touch-ups. Because you can very easily have your hands slip or something goes wrong 
and you end up causing big gouge or something and you just find yourself thinking that you were better off before you started except with this kind of work unless you're going to make another part um, you can't really like hit a save point and go back to when it was good um, once you go too hard and you cut away too much then you're kind of screwed so i like this this is a uh, feeling good um i don't know if i'm really going to hit anything on here i mean there's a little bit of a lip here you know Maybe I could yeah, I could try to take off a little bit like that, but you know, I don't really want to go too crazy here because I'm going to end up just goofing it up on the last one and then I'm going to be mad at myself and it's not going to look good. And I'm going to be mad that I wasted my time and money and April's time doing her fabrication work. You know, so I just want to go nice and easy. And you can see it's actually starting to tear up the uh, little foam block. Uh, if you're kind of curious what these are, they're just uh, regular old 3M sanding blocks. This is an extra fine. That's a fine. Um, I don't want to use this because... You know, the, it's called fine, but it takes off quite a bit for the realm of what we're doing right now. Um, you know, so I don't really want to take off too, too much. But what I might have to do is if I really want to get rid of this layer here on the outside, I might hit it with that fine and then smooth it out again with the extra fine. make sure it fits. Now what you want to do as you go along doing this is um, you don't want to do a ton of sanding and then get to the end and be like, oh no, I went way too far. You know, do some little checks as you go along and you can kind of see where you need to be. So I can see already here, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but there's kind of a high spot on the corner, maybe a little high spot here. There's a little bit of maybe built up material in the corner. And then for this to drop in, I really don't need to take off too, too much. And I think the middle is gonna drop right in um, kind of the way that I want it. So I think what I might do is just use my knife just a little bit. Now, if I was trying to do something crazy detailed, I'd use an X-Acto knife or something. But I mean, we're not doing anything really for aesthetics here. We're just trying to remove mass material. So a simple utility knife does what I need it to. Now the great thing about 3D printing like this is it's super soft. So without really using any pressure at all, I could take up some layers. Let's see what we look like in the corners. So it looks like it did a good job in the outer section. I think I'm just gonna kind of whittle a little bit down here and then I'm gonna take off a little bit more on these outer corners over here, you know, cause it's still towed in quite a bit. Um,
Now that's feeling a lot better already, but I can still feel a lot of kind of resistance going in, but not anything that I would call unmanageable. Um, I actually kind of like that the way it is. You know, there's minimal gap in there. Um, so what I could probably do is when I go to work on the stock, I could put a little bit of Bondo in there, a little bit in there, let it fill in, and then, you know, just kind of almost treat it like uh, doing caulking on tile or something. And I could just kind of massage it out and, you know, make a nice little 90 in there and then fill in that gap just so you can't see it. And then this right here is gonna end up being trapped in like that. So, you know, nobody's really gonna be kind of looking too closely at this because if they are, it's really only gonna be if you're wearing the helmet and your eye is probably past where your eye can actually see. So the nice thing is, is we really don't have a ton to worry about. So for here, I'm probably gonna take just like a Q-tip or a stick or something like that and I'll kind of just cram some Bondo in there let it dry up, and then I'll just sand it. It'll look good. I'll try to make it flush with that surface. You know, I can use an X-Acto knife and either cut it along to follow that chamfer there, or cut it along so it stays flat here. Um, I'll have to figure out whatever I want to do, but yeah, I think I'm gonna call this one done. Um, actually, <laughs> so look at that. It wasn't even clicked in all the way. Uh, that gap has now been taken care of, and that one is gonna have uh, just a tiny little bit of, bit of Bondo put in there. So. Yeah, look at that. We finished it right before our eyes. Um, I'll obviously pop it out again. Um, it's probably in there pretty hard, uh, but I'll want to make sure I put a little bit of glue in there and then prime it all up. But yeah, this rangefinder is now looking pretty good. Um, may or may not do that in this step, but uh, I think I'm just going to do sanding for this video. And then what I'll do is in the next video, I'll bondo it, um, let it dry, and then we'll go from there. So let's switch gears over to the stock. Now the stock is gonna require a little bit more work, but like I said, I'm not gonna to go too hardcore in the end because this is sandwiched in between uh, for the pivoting mechanism on the right-hand side ear, and then this is glued inside the rangefinder. So it's really only that area that I need to worry about. And this is one of those things where you could definitely go way too far if you let yourself get carried away. Um, so I mean, maybe I'll use some of this harder sandpaper just to start eating away at that layer but as you can see it's kind of bubbled up um, so actually I wonder if I could just cut away at it it's actually pretty hard um, so we'll try just sanding it because I really don't need to cut it I just want to sand off the little layer that's bubbled up. And bring it flush with the surface. And we're almost there already. And you might need to switch around every once in a while because what happens is all the particulate and everything that you're sanding gets stuck inside the little micro pores on here and you're wearing down the surface anyways. So, you know, it's good to kind of move it around every once in a while. I mean, these things are meant to be disposable. You know, you're not going to make that little section good forever. Um, so it still kind of looks like it's there, but you can like barely feel it. Yeah, so and this is where it gets tricky because part of me wants to just take the knife and like cut away at it and then fill it in, but it's never going to be perfect. You're going to end up seeing kind of like a concave indentation because the Bondo is not going to have the same feel as the plastic. So I think what I might do now is I might just kind of lightly hit this whole thing with the sanding block. I'll start with the fine. And then I'll hit it with the ultra fine after.
It's good to kind of change up directions as you do this because depending on the direction that the fused filament was going, it's going to have uh, different surfaces that your sanding block is hitting. And, you know, you might get like a shadow because of it. So you might want to switch up a circular pattern, move linear with it, maybe move at an angle. I hope you enjoy my DJ work as we go. Now you especially want to be careful because, you know, unlike this stuff right here, which is either, it's either micro jetting or SLA, but it's, it's very strong. Um, when you kind of just go in layers like this, which is the, um, it's probably a PLA or something kind of soft, you know, you can see that it kind of flexes. So I don't want to do anything dumb and, um, you know, crack it or flex it too much um, because then I will either have to 3D print another part or I'll buy another one from her if I don't want to take the time to do it myself. Our 3D printer here at the house is not working right now. Um, so I basically need to outsource her for the time being. This part I could definitely do at the house, but uh, I had her do all of it simply because some of the parts are too big for the bed that we have. And I didn't want to make it in a bunch of little pieces and then have to glue it together and worry about making it look good. Um, that's not really anything that I wanted to have to deal with. Kind of nice to leave it up to the pros. And again, this isn't sponsored by April Storm Props. I was just very impressed with the work that uh, she did. And um, you know, Try to give credit where credit's due. So I actually, I actually kind of really like that. Um, I don't even know if I really want to mess around with Bondo. Um, it's pretty smooth. I mean, you can definitely still see it. But my worry is if I keep sanding to the point where you can't see it right now, I'm going to potentially weaken that outer layer. Um, I kind of think what I'm going to do now is call this done. Um, and then what I'll end up doing is priming it, gently sanding it, painting it, gently sanding, painting and see how that comes out. Um, I'm pretty sure that with three layers of coating on here and light sanding in between, I think we're gonna make a really nice smooth part that looks good. So let's not fuss around anymore on this. Um, like I said, I don't wanna go too far and then regret it. So I think we're gonna call this done. So that will be all for today. Uh, what I'll do now is, um, you know, in our next episode, we'll start doing some Bondo work on there. And then uh, we can ultimately move on to painting for these parts. Um, I'm probably going to do all the prep work in one, so you're going to see a video come out after that for work on the helmet and the earpieces. Um, they don't need a ton of work. It's literally some inside stuff that I'm only going to do so that my foam padding glues on nicely. Um, but yeah, the, the outside came out awesome. It was very smooth, looks great, it's going to be ready to go. So yeah, let's, um, let's call it a day for here, and um, next time I see you, we'll do some body work. All right. So thanks for joining me and I hope you guys all have a good night. All right, thanks.